Hello folks and welcome back to WKNI TV 25. This is Good News Covenant County segment and we've got three wonderful people on here and, and they're in talking about a, a program I would thoroughly enjoy going out and, and going to myself but it's the outreach meeting and workshop that's being done actually on Tuesday. You're watching it today um, and then tomorrow because we're kind of recording this and be played later on today which is Monday and then it'll be played in, uh, on Tuesday morning. And uh, it's uh, something that, you know, uh, this is what I tell folks. First, let me introduce y'all. I got Mr. James Currington, and you're with? I'm with uh, USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service and also the Wildgrass RCND. All right, and this beautiful young lady? Barbie Radney. And you are? A local farmer. A local farmer. And we've got Professor? Victor Khan. Khan. Professor Victor Khan. <laughs> I gotta do it, folks. You know I'll do it. Okay, the return of Khan, uh, <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> Had to. Uh, yeah. uh, we can't be serious on this. Uh, we can be, but we yeah. got to be. You know, let people enjoy the program too, as well. Um, lots of information being disseminated during this program, and what I was saying before, it's about uh, horticulture. I can't pronounce it. Horticulture. Yes. And, and it's something that's fascinated me over the years. And uh, uh, I tell people all the time that this is something that everybody needs to know farming. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Uh, there may be a time people are, are predicting the future, you know, as far as, you know what, uh, uh, there's going to be problems and the economy is going to go south and, and, and everything. Well, guess what? Walmart ain't possibly going to be there. Winn Dixie may not be there. Uh, you know, uh, cost plus and, 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 and all that may not be there. And you're going to have to provide for yourself. And, and the best way to know how to do it is to learn it and practice it. And, you know, uh, even if you just put a little patch down every, you know, season and, and grow food. And, and uh, there's nothing more. I, ha oh, I know my wife has tremendous amount of pride when she grows the tomatoes and she grows the okra and she grows all these vegetables out in the garden and then she comes in, cans it, and we're sitting down at in dinner a couple of months later eating the food that she's taking care of. Yes, and, and, you know, hand raised. I mean, that, that's the best you can get. But we've got some new technology as well. It's not actually new. This has been going on for years. But we've got people now that are practicing it on a more bigger, bigger level now. But uh, Mr. Currington, if you would, tell us a little bit about uh, what's coming up uh, on, on Tuesday. Yes, sir. I'd be glad to, Eddie. Uh, actually, now, I retired from NRCS after 33 years. And uh, I came back to work with them part-time to do the outreach portion of NRCS. I'm the executive director of Wildgrass RCND. I bring those two points out because they tie together in what we're really trying to do all over the state of Alabama. Uh, I was asked by uh, Dr. William Puckett, who's the state director for Natural Resource Conservation Service, to actually come back and help get the word out in local areas of some of the programs that NRCS have to offer. Uh, that started about three years ago. So this year, we actually now at the point where we bring other agencies in along with NRCS. We actually got the Farm Service Agents, we got the Rural Development Service, and we got the Forestry Service along with this, uh, Auburn Extension. And uh, this year, Tuskegee Uni University and last year, they actually came aboard. And they have actually been helping us go around and, and tell the information about the program that we have to offer. Uh, some of the programs that, that, that we have, you can actually go into NRCS and uh, local personnel you would need to see, it's the Steve Yemberton. Uh, Steve will help you uh, actually get acquainted with the programs every year, and they change a little bit every year. But this year, some of the most popular programs that we have with natural resource would be the micro-irrigation. That's where you put the plastic down. and. You water your plants under the plastic. Mr. Khan will talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the most popular one we've been having over the last two years have been the tunnel house. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can actually grow the vegetables inside a, uh, a structure that has plastic on it. 
And what that does allow you to extend the growing season. So small farmers that actually grow in vegetables, they can actually go almost year round with a uh, with a tunnel house. That'd be um, awesome to have tomatoes yes, in the sir. middle of December. I mean, yes, and the prices, you know, are outrageous on a lot of vegetables right now. Uh, I believe it was two seventy eight or something like that for a pound of tomatoes. Yes, sir. And I, I love tomatoes. Oh, in, yes, sir. In, yes, uh, sir. You know, to me, that's a, a one of the vegetables that, you know, you put on every sandwich. Oh, it is. Uh, it is. You know. <laughs> and we live in the greatest country in, in the world. It's great farmland. Oh, yeah. yeah and, we, and we've got a young lady that farms here. And, yeah. and I didn't know you were a real farmer. I am a real farmer. <laughs> See. And, and that's a dying breed. Yes. It and, is. and there's not a lot of... Uh, 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 people that are growing up to go into farming, it's, it, it, it's, it's less and less every, right. every time yeah. you turn around. And yeah. things like this that make it convenient uh, to grow things yes, year round and have a, a product year round, something you can take pride in year round, maybe it'll, it'll draw people into farming. I'd love to have 500 acres and go out and farm it. Oh, yes. But, even mm -hmm. one acre. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially if you have a tunnel house. Up on it. Yeah. Well, we you can double um, the uh, amount of produce that you would normally put in a small garden. You can double it in a tunnel house and not use as much land. Well, twice right. the produce. And you're doing outside farming now, right? I do outside and tunnel house. Oh, you do both. Uh -huh. So you're actually yielding product year-round now. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right yes, now. Sir. Uh, Mr. Khan and I just planted the tunnel house here in Andalusia, and we put in uh, mixed lettuce, we put in broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, um, onions, onions, rutabagas, turnips, um, romaine lettuce, and in March, we've already got our tomatoes started, in March we'll transfer them to the tunnel house and we'll have potatoes, iceberg potatoes, and new potatoes in it. And that's a whole salad right there in the tub house, right there, ready wow. to go. Well, and I love salad too. In fact, you heard the other gentleman that was on earlier talking about weight loss. I've lost 36 pounds in a little over a month. Can you imagine getting fresh romaine lettuce oh. with Vidalia onions, radishes, and tomatoes out of your backyard? Wow. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. and and it's healthy, oh, and oh, yes, and the yes. only thing that's in that vegetable that you're eating is whatever you put out there that's for it. Right. Um, there's no uh, hormones, no additives, unless you put them on it yourself, which I don't believe in anyway. But no. but uh, all right, and you're Barbie Radney. Correct. Okay, and uh, you farm here locally. I farm here locally in the tunnel house, and okay. then uh, I've leased land down in Florella where I have blueberries and strawberries going in and pomegranate. Um, She's going to be another good friend. I can see this happening right now. Yeah. And uh, we co-farmed with another farmer down there who's putting in cream 40s and all type of peas, butter beans and things like that. And so we're real excited about this coming year. You know, everything's really taken off and I really want to encourage people to come to this meeting t tomorrow and learn more about it. Two years, a year, a little over a year ago, I was without, you know, any knowledge or any way to get about, go about doing this and making it happen for my personal life. And then I called Washington, <laughs> or I got online and I, I found the resources and started making calls and met Mr. Currington. Consequently, we met, he brought Mr. Khan down and they set up micro irrigation. Prior to that, we were hauling buckets of water out there and dumping it on the plants and everything. And this man is so full of education, it's unreal when it comes to growing produce. Wow. And I have been right under his wing, right on the phone with him. <laughs> I cry on his shoulder all the time. What do I do about this or that? Either him or Mr. Carrington. But I've come a long ways, and I've got other people that are really, really excited about this and really interested in becoming backyard farmers as well as making um, availability for the tunnel house to go up on their property and it's really not that time consuming once you get it up it's just maintaining it right and it's it's 
wonderful, wonderful opportunity, and I want to encourage everybody to please come to the meeting tomorrow and learn more because education is what we need to be able to go forward and have a good agricultural community. And this is something that people can put away like we were talking about at the beginning. Is, is something that, that we're, we're naturally in, in South Alabama is a farming community. Yes, sir. And, and actually all of Alabama is at, at one point in time, but, but right now it's kind of moved toward the south, and, and it's an, uh, this is an opportunity to yield year-round product. Mm -hmm. Yes. And whether it's for your family or for retail, retail. or wholesale retail, um, it can be done. Now, to your left, over there is, as I jokingly called, Return of Khan. <laughs> but we have Professor Victor Khan from the University of Tuskegee. Welcome to WKNI, Professor. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate you coming on. But I understand you're the man that invented the tunnel uh, farming type thing. Can well, I wouldn't claim invented it. I would claim uh, I started early research work here in Alabama. I got you. In 1992, that's when I started with Tunnel House. Well, What's the advantage to a Tunnel House? I mean, we're talking year-round, mm -hmm. but obviously there's other uh, things we just touched on. You can control the environment. You mm -hmm. can control what goes into it. Mm -hmm. uh, give us some of the benefits and things that come from that. Well, some the, the most obvious benefit is that uh, in the middle of winter and fall, all through spring, would account for eight months almost, seven, eight months out of the year. And when you look at small farmers, they usually grow their produce during the hot months of the year, which is b between four to five months of the year. So when you look at it overall, you have a longer stretch of time, what I call inertia, because they're really not doing anything. And I felt that in this great country of ours, with all the science, we can put somebody up on the moon. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly we can figure a simple way, simple economical way of coming up with a device to help the farmers grow s some produce during the time of the year when they can hardly grow anything on the outside. And that's how the idea came about. So it's one thing to have ideas. You have to also balance it with costs. Because when you're dealing with small farmers, small farmers are not wealthy. Okay. So whatever structure you come up with, it has to be cost effective. So I came up with the idea of putting up a structure that looks like a greenhouse. But it doesn't quack like a greenhouse. It depends for heating. There's no artificial heating applied, no artificial cooling. Because in the wintertime, it's cold enough. What you're trying to do is trap as much heat from the sun. Because the good Lord gave us the sun. The sun shines on all of us. And it's a resource that nobody can corner. So plastics offer a good opportunity of trapping the heat during the short winter days and by manipulating your soil and what I mean by manipulating by adding enough water to the soil it would then retain the heat the water then would act as a battery it's a conductor of conductor the conductor would yeah. trap the heat Amazing. and when you close the, the house down yeah. at night the heat from the soil would then radiate above it keeps the micro environment around the plant pretty warm. So when you're in 10 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Fahrenheit, those plants in there are 20 degrees warmer than the outside temperature. So this past week, we experienced the most record-breaking weather we've had in years here. In yeah. fact, I've got people that said in a whole lifetime they've never seen it right. that cold in this area. Uh, for that long of a period of time. So this, this, this would survive that? Well, yeah. let, me, let me add in here. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Khan and I planted the tunnel house over here in Andalusia. And we planted half of it with all the real fragile lettuces and things like I just explained. 
We went through that unbearable cold temperature. The next day I went back and I've got growth this big. And today it's probably this big with the micro irrigation that he was explaining earlier. That totally preserved through the coldest days we've ever had as far as I've been down south, you know. And the tunnel house maintained the temperature for those to germinate, not just. So they out. germinated, they weren't even. They were germinating through the freeze, through that sub zero Incredible. freeze and all of that. Yes. I would have thought, I'd looking at all the brown. Over there and let you see exactly mm -hmm. what I'm oh, we will. About. We'll, we'll yeah. come and do that. It's really, a, it's really yeah. an expression and, of and what the, the tunnel house and micro irrigation is all about. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we, we're talking uh, to the professor and, and to Barbie, um, Mr. Currington, about cost effectiveness. Now, you represent the other side of this. How is the government stepping up to, to help with this? Okay, uh, good point, Eddie. Uh, actually, the government, uh, actually, like Ms. Rayleigh, we uh, actually saw the need that a lot of the producers, that, especially small scale, do not know a lot about our program. They, like she, two years ago, didn't know this procedure existed. I didn't know it existed <laughs> until today. Right. Yeah. So these meetings like we're having tomorrow is a prime example of why we need to get the word out uh, through our uh, uh, Natural Resource Conservation State Office. Dr. Puckett have saw the need to put money out to conduct these meetings through RCND. And, uh, now, what, what they're sponsoring now is the workshops and the meetings. Yes, sir. Is there any subsidy? Uh, I mean, farmers are always talking about subsidies. Um, is there any subsidy set aside for Tunnel House? Yes, sir. There that, that, that is a subsidy. You can, uh, you can get up to 2,172 square foot of a house every, every uh, once in a lifetime, once an entity that you have. So that uh, the two houses that we actually put in, is the 30 by 72. That would be the maximum size that you could get in a tunnel house. Now we are experimenting with a house that's 20 by 48, that's on a smaller scale. Through that, you can get two houses put in. We have actually done one at the elementary, I mean at the middle school over in Helen, Alabama. And through a project that we did through RCND, we actually want to do this all over the state of Alabama. But now the good news about that is that this will allow you to do it on an even smaller scale than the big house. Now, what they would do, the government would actually provide funding on a cost share type basis that uh, allow you to sign up every year for this uh, house to be put in. You can actually sign up for the micro irrigation, which include putting the plastic down with the tubing under the plastic. Uh, that you can actually grow plants through uh, the micro irrigation part of it. But the tunnel house itself, now every year the prices may change the drop on it. So I hesitate to tell you exactly what it is. So they day. actually pay for it or is it a, uh, is, is it a, they pay a percentage of it. It's okay. Not, yes, sir. And it's, it's, and it's not necessarily cost share, it's just a percentage of what they offer every year. And they do it regional now instead of local. So the state, uh, uh, United States government actually determine what the prices would be every year. But I highly encourage everyone that's be interested in it, go to your local office, uh, which is the NRCS office here in Covington County. And uh, Mr. Steve Yeberton, they can give you the price of what they're paying for that year. But they do provide funding. Yes, sir. I know back in the mid 80s we lived in Florida and uh, I started a tunnel house I didn't know that's what it would be called <laughs> but what I did was take PVC and I made arches out of it and I was going to put in the plastic and then the uh, felt screen that goes over the top the black to keep heat in and all and then there was a anomaly called Hurricane Andrew okay. came along and decided that I wasn't going to have my I called it a greenhouse. Yes. But uh, you know I, I've been fascinated with this stuff and I'm very fascinated. I hope you all are as fascinated as I am. Here's an opportunity to to put together something that that uh, it 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 it's prosperous for everybody in the family and in the community as well. 
Um, I hope to see a bunch of arches going up all over the place. But I also see what I call 4x4 four four boxes uh, in some of the pictures that you got as well. And, and I just got online. I, this has nothing to do with y'all might have, but maybe not. But, but uh, I just found a place online to where I can actually build a 4x4 four four box inside my house and have year-round produce as well uh, from that. So what this does is it gives you an opportunity on a large scale to see what you can do. The federal government is going to be their representative by yes, you yes, uh, to talk about the where the, you know, they'll come in and help. You're going to be there talking about, hey, look, I've been doing it now for two years. And, and you're a real dirt farmer, uh, and, and uh, yeah, she even got dirty nails. <laughs> hey, I know a good pedicurist and manager. <laughs> we can hook you up over there. Uh, uh, no. but, uh, <laughs> uh, they were here when we recorded another segment with somebody else. But uh, anyhow, <laughs> Professor, Irrigation is one of the most difficult things in farming. I mean, uh, to me that is, uh, that I observe as an outsider. You see uh, exotic, what I call exotic, uh, uh, big arms stretching out across fields with sprinklers hanging off of them to irrigate large fields. Out west, they've got circular um, uh, farms and things like that that they irrigate with. Uh, these big arms that go around, I don't know, hundreds of feet long. Hmm. Um, but here, you don't see that that often in, in South Alabama. There are some places that have it. But, you know, when you're talking about tomatoes, when you're talking about uh, okra, when you're talking about corn, these types of fields, um, to have it condensed into an area like this, what would a 2,000, is it 2,000 square foot? 2172. 2172 square foot. Um, let's, and I'll just throw it out. You don't have no clue what I'm going to ask you, but, but how much product will that yield? Well, if you grow uh, what I call a monocrop, let's say just one crop. Right. Let's say you're a producer like uh, Barbie, and she has a good market for, let's say, collards in the fall and into the winter. Love and she you. decides to plant her whole tunnel house with collards. She stands to harvest over 800 pounds of collards. Wow. 45 days. You can almost <laughs> keep up with me. <laughs> yeah, 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 800 pounds, pounds of collards? Right. Uh -huh. and That's if serious. She, That's serious business. Then. And if she crops the leaves, instead of cutting the whole plant, they, come back they will come back on 21 days after, mm -hmm. and she will be selling fresh collards for the whole winter and mm -hmm. spring. Mm -hmm. And that's the potential of it, see? And tomatoes uh, are everybody's favorite. Oh, Teresa's going to be there tomorrow, <laughs> and you're gonna, she's going to sign up, and, <laughs> and <laughs> she's going <laughs> to... Um, yielding? Yielding. Right. Do they get to be big? I'll tell you. They're normal. I mean, they're, they're actually, well, I've got big boy, better boy, celebrity, and I've got two or three different varieties right now that's going into the tonos in March, and um, they grow just real nice, heavy, thick foliage, and then the produce is beautiful. I mean, it's not all sun, a lot like the example down on the other farm when I planted outside um, because of all the rain last year and everybody oh, lost yeah. their gardens and everything so did I on a lot of that but um, the damage was to the leaves and then the tomatoes got sunburn on top mm. instead of ripening from the bottom like it, they're supposed to and coming out around making a beautiful uh, fruit they Victor was down there with me and, and was showing me you know how the sun had burn the top. That's why they were turning red. Uh -huh. Now in a townhouse, you don't have that problem. It's equal. It's all equal. It's all spread out the same. Your foliage is beautiful. You can look at some pictures. You can go online even and look at some pictures on RCD. They have right. a website that you can go in and look at what a townhouse actually can be made. And you can, like 
the rows that we just set up with all the lettuce and everything, we put those in 12, is it, wasn't that right, 12 inches, inches apart. Oh. And then put the micro irrigation right on it because we're, we're going to just, as that continues to produce, we're going to use that crop and then turn around and replant it. And then plant this side and then you plant that side. And like every three years you need to let the ground, you know, refurbish itself. Or you can, you know, add to it whatever you need to to bring it up to that quality to grow the produce. But it's, it's remarkable. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this, all right, so tell us a little about the event tomorrow, or today, depending on. Well, one of the things, uh, it again, is we're talking about the tunnel houses right now, and the, and the small growing with the vegetables, but also tomorrow we will also be talking through uh, uh, the Forestry Service, you actually will want to talk about how you can be productive on your land for growing trees. That would be another segment of the, uh, what we were talking about. Uh, rural development has programs through the government that actually uh, talks about how you can get home repairs and different things in that. FSA is another agency. They'll be talking about, they got a popular program that's out right now called the microloans. Uh, I won't go into details on none of them, but you can get all that tomorrow. Uh, they talks about the. I'm going to try to come out tomorrow and videotape a lot of this if it's all right with y'all. Yes, sir. Please do. We we love. Is this too. something that it, it personally hits me too because I love fresh vegetables. Uh, we're talking earlier about the bugs. You know, you got control into the bugs. You've got control into the temperature. Uh, you got control of what's put into the vegetable itself. You got absolutely total control. Yeah, of, of the and, whole and thing. After you put the micro irrigation in, like just say yesterday, for example, um, I'm still learning on my temperatures, you know, like when it's real cold, you know, leave it closed down. When it's 55 and above, you roll up both ends because it's got a roller and you can just roll up the ends. But in the hot summer, you can roll up the whole side and it becomes like a bull barn, kind of. Right. But um, all I had to do is go out there, roll up the both of the ends, and turn one faucet, and the whole tunnel house was watered. Wow. And then at 3 o'clock yesterday, yeah. turn off you the water. You hear this, Teresa. <laughs> turn off the water. No more Eddie going out there. <laughs> 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 Sprinkling with the hose or, any time. Hoses or anything. It's, it's yeah. wonderful. And, and mm. I didn't turn off the water, so I called Mr. Riley last night. I said, we need to turn off the water. And he He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And any time you have any problems, uh, Mr. Khan and I'll be glad to come back over and work with. Oh, you you'll in, be in visiting Andalusia a lot once <laughs> I get started. Right. <laughs> and, and, and not only us, but the Auburn Extension have a local. They do as well, here, and they does an excellent job. Give us your website that uh, folks can come visit. Uh, uh, Wildgrass R C N D is our website. It's Wildgrass.com. R C N D R C not the M, but the D. RCD. Dot com. Dot com. Yes, sir. All and right. USDA is the USDA Alabama. And they'll Alabama. find this under uh, tunnel? Uh, you can on the probably Google Tunnel House and NRCS to show up. Okay. Uh, gotcha. Your, your local office here is uh, uh, also is on 55, I believe, at that address. Professor, got to ask you this. Technology the way it is today, everything is done with applications and everything is can you get computer app I, i'm doing this for the geeks out there that <laughs> want to get into farming mm -hmm. isn't there ways that you can uh, i think i've seen this where you can actually have an app that waters and and fertilizes does it all you can do it away from the from the yes you 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 can have uh reservoirs with your water fertilizer inside and you can put in timers with with uh various gadgets and you can from a distance turn it on turn it off she doesn't have to call mr riley to, to right it but the only problem with that is there is no substitute for the human eyes there you go and the intelligence that god gave us so you have to be out there you you can use the technology if you have to be traveling or something like that but it's still best for you to be there 
because the technology wouldn't tell you when a pipe right. springs a leak. Oh, they ruined the whole thing. Right. So you, so you have to be in there. And what I'm trying to say is that technology cannot be a complete and a total substitute for the human eyes and hands. Quick question, and I know y'all, you know, uh, we want to talk about when the meeting is and all, <laughs> and where, but on, on what we talked about yielding earlier, <laughs> um, you told us 800 pounds, okay? <laughs> Compared to the same size, mm -hmm. open air, mm -hmm. weather contact, what's the difference? The difference is about 50%. You, you'll yield 50% less. So 400 pounds maximum right. on a good... On good, good right. management. And what you have to look at is that when the plant is on the outside, it's... It is subjected to, to all the stress and strain of the environment. For, for example, people who have collars outside, those collars were flattened by the cold, the leaves, everything. Uh, those who had it in the tunnel house, because there's some tunnel house growers that I work with in West Alabama, and they were all laughing to the market because they were able to go into the tunnel houses and harvest the collards. It wasn't, it wasn't affected by the frost. So these are some of the little uh, intrinsic advantages you have. Also, the, what, is, what comes with a big yield, and, and I don't think we have time to get into that, but I'll just mention it. With heat, heat is very vital for biological growth. So when you heat the tunnel house, the soil in the tunnel house is heated up. When it is heated up, it brings about subtle changes in the soil microorganisms. And what happens, you get a shift in organisms that are beneficial for plant growth. And that also helps to account for the increased yield that you get when you grow in a tunnel house as opposed to outside. Wow, guys, I appreciate this very much. This is fascinating me. I know I'm gonna to try to attend uh, this tomorrow and videotape some of it to bring back to our viewers, but it'll be at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning or today, it's Tuesday. Just make sure if you're watching this on Tuesday, it's today at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. That just doesn't sound like enough time to get all this stuff done that you're talking about. But the people are going to be able to apply. Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, they're going to have all the documents there, all the paperwork there. You'll be there to answer questions. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Sure. Okay. So you're going to get a lot more out of a two-hour program than you are 30 minutes, obviously. But uh, we want to thank you for coming on WKNI. And this is going to be held where? Um, I think it's on the yeah. Seat the okay. It's yes, USDA Service Center. At 2395 2 Alabama Highway 55. Down by the fairgrounds. Yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. We're, we're from here. We <laughs> <don't get that. laughs> Who needs the address? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, I can't tell you how much I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. We have and a personal invitation to come over and look at the um, tunnel house in production. I'd love Why to. And going maybe. Out there, you know, I'd love to. Maybe do a follow-up on it every couple of weeks and let well, people see. We've got some other meetings. Mr. Uh, Khan is going to speak strictly on tunnel houses in, in the future. Here? Yes. yes. Sir. Oh, okay. And we're going to have... Um, <laughs> the return of Khan. <laughs> the return of Khan. It's real. <laughs> Mr. Currington, too, will keep us up. The return of Currington. It just doesn't happen. Not as good. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> These two men are wonderful to work The wealth of knowledge. I mean, I have learned that. I can't tell you how much I have learned. And uh, the support and help that these two men offer our community, it's 
not like any other. And you can call them up at 7 o'clock at night. I, and I have, haven't I? <laughs> and I've got this problem. Con's and, like. <laughs> and he'll just walk me through it. And if it needs assistance, he'll come down and he'll be right there for you. And, and you know, and I'm the same way. And so is Mr. Currington. You know, if we can help or do anything, we'll be glad to do well, that. To well. get the word out. We want our community thriving in fresh produce and gardens. Year round. Yeah, yeah. Year round. So uh, Tuesday, the 14th at 10 to 12, and uh, they're gonna, all these folks are going to be there, plus I'm sure many others, and uh, uh, we invite you to come on out there as well. And uh, I, I just got one question for the gentleman. First day of summer, y'all in? <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> I, I tell you, I got to to be it. If y'all make a success out of it, I'll participate next year. <laughs> Good governmental answer. <laughs> Sounds like one of them government programs. <laughs> Well, gentlemen and young lady, we appreciate y'all coming on. It's been lots of fun, lots of information. God bless y'all. This is God's work being done, as far yes, as I'm sir. concerned. Yes, because sir. when you're when you're producing His His fruits that 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 make us survive, that allow us to be healthy, and and you're able to extend that into the homes and and places, uh, it's, it's an extension of God's hand. Yes, sir. And we thank you for that. Thank God bless y'all. We'll see y'all tomorrow or today, depending on when you're watching this. Remember, folks, keep it real. Keep God in it. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you later on.